Hallelujah. So miracles can happen. Wow, what a week we've had. What a, what a wonderful resurrection, resurrection Sunday we had last week. Hallelujah. I mean, we broke all our records. Somebody praise God with me. Come on. Hallelujah. We're thankful for all the lives given to Christ and surrendered. We're so thankful for what he's doing. And then Monday night prayer was powerful, well attended, and such a strong anointing. Wednesday night, my, what a, I, was, I was amazed by Wednesday night's attendance. And wow, the move of God. If you weren't here and if you haven't watched it yet, you need to listen to that word from Wednesday night. Talk about what it means to be righteous. And it'll change your life if you get a hold of it. Praise God. And then we just had a busy week. Friday night, Luke and Melissa were at Johnson University. We had Miss Shays here. And uh, they were having a worship uh, symposium or seminar. And hallelujah, Friday night I was in Knoxville at, uh, at a, the uh, Knoxville Christian Ninimar, if I can pronounce that right, the old Burma, uh, a, a Burmese church, but we had a, 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 a meeting for different nations. We had at least 10, 12 nations represented. Friday night, a, a, a wonderful group from the lift went with me, and wasn't it a powerful time? It was an amazing time in the presence of God. I was looking, Pastor Moses, isn't that a cool name? Pastor Moses Mo, he told me he's going to try to be here this morning. I don't see him. Uh, so he said either this morning or Wednesday night. But we just had a tremendous time. God moved, saved lives, restored people. I'm so thankful. And then yesterday, our worship team was uh, in Maryville at a large ladies conference leading worship there. Praise God. I'm thankful for what God's doing. Amen. This morning, Sean and Carla are preaching up in the mountains in Del Rio, Tennessee. I'm glad to be part of a house where, where uh, it's not just what's happening inside these walls, but it's happening out there. Praise God. Hallelujah. We celebrate. We celebrate all that the Lord is doing. Speaking of out there, I want to remind you that this Thursday night is the National Day of Prayer. Thursday night, National Day of Prayer. And did you know Sevier County is one of the few, maybe, I may be thinking uh, correctly, it's the only place now in the United States. I always hesitate when we say the only place because it's, it's a big nation, right? But I understand it's certainly one of the few places, if not the only place, where National Day of Prayer is happening on the courthouse steps. And where the mayors of every city, Sevierville, Pigeon Forge, and Gatlinburg, all three mayors are going to be at the prayer gathering. Come on. And the mayor of Sevier County. Yeah, come on. That's amazing. Now, here's what I want to ask you to do. Uh, different churches are coming. I want to ask the Live Church, as many of you as can. Six o'clock it starts. It'll end by 7.30. Uh, I want to ask as many of us as can. Let's be out there. We need to show the rest of the county that Christians are praying for our county, praying for good things in our government, and our families, come on, in our, in our school system. We, we need to show, praise God, and I'm hoping, I haven't got confirmation yet, but I, I'm hoping our, some of our band's going to be playing there along with members from other uh, worship teams in the county, and it may be that one of our very own is going to be singing the national anthem. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and that, that won't be me. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. If you've got a Bible, would you open with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15? I don't appreciate the way you laughed about that. <laughs> you laugh like, of course that's not going to be me. Amen. Hey, uh, while you're finding 1 Corinthians 15, uh, Nurture Conference is coming up. Now, Thursday night, Lyndall Cooley is going to be here. You need to register. It's free. It's a free conference. The only thing we're asking any money for is for the Saturday breakfast. You need to register. And you say, well, I can't be here all day Friday. Then I still want you to register and make sure you're here Thursday night. Lyndall Cooley led worship during the Brownsville Revival. That revival lasted for five years, five nights a week, and over five million, almost six million people attended those meetings. 
and they were saved. I mean, people were coming. One guy's testimony, he's, he's a biker in Canada, and, and, and he's on drugs and alcohol, and he's just spiraling downward, suicidal thoughts, all of these things. And a voice spoke to him in Canada and said, go to Pensacola, Florida. He got on his bike, drove to Pensacola, Florida, standing, the, a voice, the, it, we know it's the voice of God, directed him to go to the Brownsville Assembly of God. And he's standing there in line. I mean, they were waiting in line for a couple hours to get in to the service. And somebody said, well, how'd you hear about this? He said, uh, I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> they said, well, what are you doing here? I don't know. A voice spoke to me. He got radically saved that night. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. And so, and so Lyndall Cooley was leading worship during that time. And I just believe that as he comes and shares on that Thursday night uh, for leaders. And if you say, well, I'm not a leader. <laughs> if you've got influence over anybody, you're a leader. Come on. I said, if you've got influence over anybody, I don't want to go too long on that, but you need to understand, I'm looking at a whole group of leaders in here. And if you'll start thinking of yourself as a leader, it'll begin to change things in your world. And, and so I encourage you to get registered. It's free, but you do need to register, all right? And there's some cards out there, and you can do that at theliftchurch.tv. Ask in the seeds, and they'll help you do that. Praise God. Well, have you enjoyed our series this resurrection season? We talked about a tale of two trees. We talked about a tale of two stones. Today we're going to wrap this series up with a tale of two men. A tale of two men. So let's begin reading in 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam, there's man number one. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ. You guessed it. There's man number two. In Christ, all shall be made alive. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. Look with me at John chapter 16, verse 33. These are the words of Jesus. They're in red letter. And it's Jesus speaking and grab a hold of what he says. These things I have spoken to you, talking to his disciples, that's you and me. These things I have spoken to you, watch it, that in me, in me, notice the phrase, in me, that in me you may have peace, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken, yes. prosperity, yes. harmony of life, yes. blessing. That's the peace of God. These things are my word I have spoken to you. I've given you my word, he says, that in me you may have peace. Watch this. In the world you will have tribulation, trouble, difficulty, trials. But be of good cheer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got, I got two yes and one praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder if Jesus got that same reaction the first time he said it. Yeah, because when you talk about in the world, now this is a promise from God, beloved. These are the words of Jesus. In the world you will have trouble, trials, difficulty. I had someone one time ask me to pray that the devil would leave her alone. I was young and stupid. And I laid my hands on that little dear saint and prayed. I said, God, let her die right now. She never wanted me to pray for her anymore. <laughs> but I said, Lord, just let her breathe her last breath and, and go on to take her on into heaven. Because she wanted the devil to leave her alone. Oh, it's getting quiet in here. As long as you're in this world, you're going to have an adversary. 
as long as you're in this world, you're going to have some troubles to deal with, some trials, some tribulations. You say, oh, if I just get enough faith, I'll never have to face anything. No, the reason you need the faith is so that you'll overcome what you have to face. I'm going to get quiet in here again. Come on, look at somebody and just poke them and say, this isn't good English, but say it anyway. Say, this ain't heaven. Hallelujah. Come on, just remind somebody, this isn't heaven. We're still in the world. How many are in the world? You know, you're not of the world anymore, but you're in the world. So listen to what Jesus said. These things I have spoken to you. Somebody lift your hand and say, he's given me his word. That in me you may have peace. Shalom. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Somebody, somebody go ahead and rejoice right there. I have overcome the world. There's a story of a young man who's getting ready to graduate college. And uh, his dad was quite wealthy. And this young man was graduating college. He had a good relationship with his dad, it, it seemed. And so he, he had his eye, this young man had his eye on a certain sports car. I mean, top of the line, just decked out, looked great car. He had his eye on that sports car. It's the only thing he really desired and wanted. And he went to his dad with it. And he said, you know, Dad, for my graduation, I know you're going to do something for me. And, and you know, he said, yes, son, what would you like? He said, there's a sports car down there at the dealer. Man, he described it to him. It, it just, I'd love to have that car. His dad, his dad just nodded. So as he went on getting closer to graduation, the young man kept expecting his dad to call him up or to pull him aside and to, to give him the keys to the car. Well, he got a little disappointed because it never came. Then the day of his graduation, the dad invited the son into his office. And when he sat down in his office, the dad looked across his desk and said, Son, I'm, I just want you to know how proud I am of you. I want you to know you've, you've finished college and your grades are great. And you're going into your life and your career and I'm so proud of you. And I've got a little something here I want to give you. The young man was, was excited, but then his face fell because it was a, a, a wrapped book that his dad handed him. He unwrapped the book, and when he did, he, he, he got angry. It was a, a genuine leather black Bible with his name embossed on the front in gold. The young man stood up in anger, threw the, the Bible on the desk, and said, you know, Dad, I really expected more of you. A Bible? All the money you've got and all you give me is a Bible? One thing I wanted, and all you give me is this Bible, and he threw the book down and he left. Graduated, moved away, had his career, never really spoke to his dad again. And as he got older and he knew his dad was getting older, he, he thought, you know, I need, I need to reconnect with dad before he dies. But it was too late. Just the next day, after having that conversation with his wife about connecting with his dad, he received a telegram. His dad had passed and left everything in his estate to the son. And the telegram said, you must come quickly to settle every issue. He traveled back home, went into the old house, went into his dad's study. He began to weep and began to cry and regret filled his soul. And as he was looking through the papers, he found that Bible. Still pristine, still with half the wrapping paper on it. He sat back in the chair, tears flowing down his cheek. He began to open the Bible and, and page through it, glance at it. As he did, he came to Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. And his dad had underlined it and put an asterisk by that one verse out of the whole Bible. That verse said, and if ye being evil know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, give to those who ask him? As the young man read those words, a key fell out of the back of the Bible onto his lap. He picked it up, had a tag from the dealer attached to it. It was a key to that sports car he had wanted. And on that tag, his dad had written, Paid 
in full. Wonder what it is that God has provided for you that you're living life without the knowledge of. I wonder what it is that our Heavenly Father, who gives much better gifts than any human, I wonder what it is that He's provided that we just don't know about. What belongs to you that you don't know? What are you missing out on because of a lack of redemptive revelation? Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, God speaking, my people are destroyed. Not because of the devil, not because of judgment from heaven. He said, my people, this is his people, this is you and I. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because they lack knowledge. Listen to me, what you don't know can cost you dearly. That young man lost a relationship with his daddy. He lost the, that, that sports car. All because he made assumptions. All because he thought he knew and he leaned to his own understanding. So what is it that God's made available to us? I talked in the tale of two trees. We talked about the choices that Adam made and that Jesus made. Remember the Bible said that, that Adam, Genesis 3, 6 says, when they saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and watch this, a tree desirable to make one wise. It was the tree God said, do not eat of this tree, for the day you eat of it, you will die. And the Bible said that Eve, the woman, was deceived by the devil's deception. But Adam was not deceived. I've got to get quiet in here. Eve was not the one who committed the great transgression. It was the man who committed the great sin. Mm -mm. And if you want to know why in the order of God, God deals with men in a different way than he deals with the ladies. It's not because of man's superiority. It's because of man's responsibility in the original sin. Now I'm going to lose some amens up in here. Come on, come on, men, men, we have a responsibility. God's looking for men to rise up and lead families. God's looking for men to rise. I am so, I am so thankful. Can I tell you that in our Monday night prayer services, we always have at least as many men and oftentimes more men gathering for Monday night prayer than we have ladies. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. I think we ought to praise God. Not because, not because I think men can pray better than ladies, but just, you know, usually it's the opposite. Usually there will be 90% women and 10% men. But thank God for what he's doing around here at the lift. Come on, can I get some men of God that will give God a great big shout of praise? Come on, can I get some ladies who will praise God that ladies aren't alone? Yeah, thank you, Jesus. So Adam transgressed. 1 John 2.16 says, they're going to put it on the screen, watch this. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, they saw the tree was good for food. The lust of the eyes, they saw that tree of knowledge of good and evil was pleasant to the eyes. And the pride of life, they saw the tree was desirable because it can make them wise. So, the three categories of sin, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Adam fell for all three, and he partook of that fruit. For all that is in the world, John writes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world is passing away. And the lust of it is passing away. Somebody say hallelujah. But he and she who does the will of God will abide forever. Can I get an amen right there? So Romans 5 verse 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, 
And thus death spread to all of us because all have sinned. So Adam and then the rest of us. So I hear people all the time, when I get to heaven, I will, I will look Adam and Eve up. I'm going to say, what were you thinking? <laughs> and if you're still that stupid in heaven, I didn't say that. Forgive me. But <laughs> I don't think we're going to be that stupid in heaven. But if we are, I think Adam and Eve will look back and say, what are you talking about? You would have done the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I wouldn't. They'd say, well, let's go ask God for the records. Yeah. All of us, Adam first. But somebody lift up your hand and say, I've been just as guilty as Adam. We've all chosen sin, and the wages of sin is death, and all that leads up to that death. But somebody lift your hand and say, thank God there's another man. His name, somebody ought to wave with me and shout out his name. His name is Jesus, and he's called the last Adam. The first Adam blew it. The last Adam came and restored it. Hallelujah. The first Adam, by his transgression, undid the paradise of God. But the last Adam came to redo what the first Adam had undone. Yeah. Hallelujah. By his transgression, the first Adam, he unleashed sickness. He unleashed sin. He unleashed death. He, he gave the authority of the world over to Satan. But thank God, Jesus came, the last Adam, and he came to redo everything that Adam had undone. And he came to undo all that tangled mess that Adam had done. Oh, glory to his name. And so our choice is, are we going to live in the first Adam? Are we going to live in the power of the last Adam? So tell the two men. Are we going to follow after Adam? It's possible even born again people can still live a life of Adam. Or we can learn how to live a life of Christ. How many like to live the life of Christ? The Bible said in Romans 5, 17, look at this verse, I love it. For if by the one man, that's Adam's offense, death reigned through the one, much more, somebody say it with me, much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life. Whew. Let me ask you, are you reigning? Are you reigning in life? To reign means to be above. Are you reigning or, or are you getting rained on? Are, are you walking in a, in a strength and in a stability of life? Or are you on that yo-yo string? Up, down, up, down. Are you, are you finding God is making the, your pathway straight and he's elevating your valley and he's bringing down your mountain so that you're walking a straight and, and narrow path to glory? Or do you find you're on that roller coaster? I mean, no roller coasters are fun for 90 seconds. But 90 minutes would kill you. Oh, we're getting quiet in here again. Come on. Right? And some people, uh, some people just own a roller coaster of life. Even as Christians, up, down. Great highs, great lows. Oh, but he's called us to live in victory. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody lift up your hand and say, he's called me to live in the victory he died for. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us. Reading from the Passion. So that we who did not know righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. Jesus took our sin so we could take his righteousness. When you see the cross and Jesus hanging there, it's you that you see hanging there. 
It's your sin. It's your rebellion. It's my ugliness. It's my failure. Hallelujah. But now when Father God sees Keith Nix, because I've surrendered to Christ, because I believe on Jesus, because I've confessed and made him Lord of my life, and I'm following him, when God Almighty, holy and pure, looks at Keith Nix, he doesn't see Keith and all my failures and all my weaknesses and all my rebellion. He sees Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. My, 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 my. You ought to look at somebody and say, that's enough to make a hypocrite shout. Go ahead. <laughs> Just kidding. Come on. Hallelujah. How many, how many are glad that you're right with God? And if you're not right with God today, somebody wave and say, today is the day. Hallelujah. Jesus took the curse. Watch it. He took the curse. He fully absorbed it so that we can receive and live in the blessing of his spirit. With us, in us, upon us, working out through us. Hallelujah. We said last Sunday, the stone of impossibilities was rolled away. The lady said, how are we going to get into the tomb? But the stone was already rolled away. And the angel said, come in and see. I just want to, I want to invite you again. Come and see the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Come and see what he's able to do. Come and see your impossibility can be possible through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Come and see. Glory, glory, glory. Look at your neighbor and say, get out of Adam and get into Jesus. We said that not only was the stone of impossibility dealt with, but the stone of invitation at Lazarus' tomb. Jesus didn't roll that one away. He rolled away the one that we could never roll away, the impossibility of our sin problem between us and God. He rolled that one away for us and invites us to come and see what life is like in his resurrection power. But then he says, there are areas in your life where there's death. There are areas in your life where you're still living like Adam. And if you'll roll that stone away and invite me into your mess, I'll speak with resurrection power. Hallelujah. And I'll bring, I'll bring you out of those things that have been holding you. And I've set you in a community of believers who help you. I've given you pastors and teachers and, and ministers, prophets and apostles and events. And they'll help unwrap you from the clothes that speak of the grave, that speak of death. Come on, you get anything out of this today? What is it that we have that we just don't know about? Somebody, I dare, I dare you to, to just do like this. It may seem a little crazy. You may not be used to if you're visiting. God bless you. Welcome. And, and you don't have to do this. But if you, I dare somebody just to push a stone out of the way and just say, here I am, Jesus. Here I am. I'm an open book. I don't want to live in Adam when I've been made a new creation in Christ. Look, look back at 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Look what he said. He said, if any man, if any woman be in Christ, in Christ, how many have been born again in here today? How many know that you know that you know that you're saved? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then will you lift your hand and say, I am in Christ. And look what he said. If any person be in Christ, they are what? A new creation. One translation says, a new species of being that has never before existed. That's the redeemed of the Most High God. If anybody be in Christ, they are a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. Hallelujah. But here's the problem. We keep finding, we keep finding the new creation living at the old address. Come on, can I preach 10 more minutes? I say we keep finding the new creation living at the old address. So we're now in Christ, but we still find ourselves living in failure, living in fear, living in insecurity, living with chips on our shoulders, 
just expecting them to be knocked off. Hallelujah. Living in the bondage of unforgiveness. Living in the control of the appetites of the flesh. God says, I've made you a new creation. I want you to learn how to live in a new address. In fact, what did Jesus say? Jesus' words to us, what are they? Follow me. You see, the problem is we have people that are getting born again, but, but they haven't realized Jesus' call is to follow. It's not just to come to the altar and repeat a prayer and say, I'm saved. It's to follow. And if you follow him, he's leading you away from the old address. He's leading you away from the old you, and he's bringing you more and more and more into an understanding of the new you in Christ. And so much of what we've, we've done is we've, we've applauded one another. We, 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 we want to help each other and encourage one another. So, so many are stuck in the old, at the old address with the old, same old problems. And, and we've, made, we've made just little clubs to, to, to uh, uh, comfort and pat each other on the back and say, it's okay, you're loved, you're loved. And you are loved. And I am loved. But he loved me so much. He wants to bring me into the fullness of who he created me to be. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be bad if we loved our children so much that instead of letting our child learn how to eat for themselves, we just keep feeding them. Because we don't want them to spill anything. We don't want them to feel bad about anything. So we just keep doing it all for them. What would, what would that result in? Stunted growth. It, it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be the way it's supposed to be. And yet somehow in the church we got this idea that, that he just wants to keep babying us and that, and that we come to Christ but we remain just as messed up as we were except now we believe we're going to heaven when we die. And so he just keeps babying us and telling us how much he loves. And that's all great and wonderful. But how many, how many believe he loves me too much to leave me the way he found me? Come on, is there anybody who believes that if I'm in Christ, there is the resurrection power of Jesus is at work inside me? Yes. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. I've got to wrap this up. You getting anything out of this? Yes. Jesus said, watch this before we read Romans 8. Jesus said, in me, these words I've spoken to you, I've given you my word so that through my word, you'll come to understand in me. In me, you have peace. You have shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Absolute prosperity, absolute victory. Hallelujah. In me, he said, you have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, troubles, sickness, difficulty. But in me, you have shalom. In the world, you got some tough days. But don't be sad. Don't become grumpy about it. Be happy. Be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. And you're now not just in the world. Your body, you're still in the world. But you're not just in the world. You're also in me. And in the world, you gotta, you got to go through some tough days. But because you're in me, you've got whatever you need to overcome whatever you face in the world. Oh, hallelujah. But you got to learn how to live in the world in me. Because if you live in the world as Adam... You're living according to your old way of thinking. You're living according to your old fears. You're living according to your old suspicions. You're living according to your old memories. You're living according to everything bad that ever happened to you. And if you do that, you're going to be, you're going to be despondent, dejected. You may have a few seconds or days where you're up, but most of your life will be spent down and in trouble. But if you can just learn how to live in the world in me, 
No matter what you face, you can have joy. No matter what you're going through, you can be of good cheer. Because you know that you know that you know that because Jesus overcame, somebody hear me, hallelujah, will you wave and say, I'm going to overcome also. So in Romans 8, he said, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Somebody lift up your hand and say, I'm not under condemnation. Whew. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life. Come on, you need to read verse two aloud with me, or verse three aloud with me. Halle or two, it's two. Hallelujah, those letters are becoming a little smaller. <laughs> Actually, I've got a line through it because I marked it all up. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Are you born again? Yes. Are you in Christ Jesus? Yes. The law of the spirit of Life, that's resurrection life, in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Come on, somebody lift your hand and say, I'm not under the dominion of sin. I don't have to sin, praise God. I've got a power that is in me to resist temptation. If I sin, I have an advocate with the Father. I don't have to run away and, and, and give up to it and say, oh, I blew it once, might as well get, no, I just repent. And he's my defense attorney, hallelujah. But thank God, he said, if you sin. He didn't say when you sin. Oh, we're gonna get quiet again. He said if, praise God, somebody hear me, for the law of sin and death is defeated by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. I've been made free. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. In other words, Jesus won. He defeated the sin problem. He defeated the sin issue by becoming like me and like you and saying no. Hallelujah. He won. That the righteous requirement of the law, which I never could do myself, it is now fulfilled in me and in you who do not walk. We don't walk according to the flesh. Where it says flesh, you could say sinful nature. We do not walk according to the sinful nature. We do not live according to the sinful nature that we used to live, but now we live and walk according to the Spirit. Somebody say the Spirit. For those who live according to the sinful nature set their minds on the things of the sinful nature. They're always thinking about the, the natural, the carnal, the things of, of flesh, the things that satisfy the sinful nature. They set their minds on those things. But those of us who live according to the Spirit, we set our minds on the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally, sinful nature minded is death. It's going to produce death in us. That, in other words, to be Adam minded is death. Adam minded. When, when they throw the slide back up, you see that picture of the guy for, forgiven. Jesus is holding him up. He's, he's failed. He's a mess. He's, he's a reject. He, he's vile. He's ugly. That, that's all of us. That's who we all were. But Jesus is holding him up. And now he's got to make a choice. Is he going to continue to live like that guy that Jesus found? Or is he going to let the life of Christ not only hold him up from the sin and say, I love you and I accept you. Is he going to let that same life of Christ now be so in him that he starts living not after Adam, but after Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. For if you live after the flesh, if you think after the flesh, you're carnally minded. I got a short video I want you to see. It's going to illustrate this. We're going to wrap this up. How many know there's a, there's a difference between living? Do you see it? Do you see it? There's a difference between living in Adam and living in Christ. And you may be ready. When you die, you're going to go to heaven 
But the question is, how are you going to live between now and heaven? To be carnally minded, to be sinful nature, Adam minded produces death. But to be spiritually minded, somebody, if you have a Bible, hold it up. Even if it's electronic, hold it up, would you? Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. So when the Bible says here, to be spiritually minded is life, he's talking about getting your mind renewed, learning how to think differently based on what the truth of God's word says. Instead of continuing to think based on everything that you used to think before you became a Christian. Come on, is this helping anybody? You, you, heard, you heard the story of a, of a little boy who was thrown from the third story of the Mall of America, right? You heard that story. You may have seen this update, but I, I, it's worth seeing again. Let's watch it because it illustrates this point. We've had resurrection power occur in this ministry. A little boy named Landon. And I've shared a little bit about this over the last week. If you don't know who Landon is, he's the, he's the five-year-old boy that got thrown off the third floor uh, in the Mall of America a little over a week ago. And... Um, we went to, Lynn and I went to the hospital earlier this week to receive communion with the family. They were all gathered there. This family is in our church. All of them are. Uh, Landon's parents and his uncles and aunts and uh, grandparents. The grandparents were founding members of this church along with us. And uh, they've been here all the, that time. And their family has been soaked in the word of God for all of their lives. And that's the backdrop to this. But we went to have communion with the family and then to anoint Landon with oil earlier this week. They asked us to come right before uh, he was to have a five hour MRI session to determine the full extent of the damage that his body suffered. It was a miracle he wasn't killed. At any rate, um, Landon's mom uh, was invited to meet another mother and, a, and her son, who was one of Landon's friends, at the mall for a day of fun. And when they went, um, going into the mall, Landon's mom had a premonition. The Holy Ghost gave her a warning. And in her words, a dread came over her. But you know, she didn't feel like she could just turn around and leave. She's supposed to meet this, this other uh, mom and son there. And so she prayed. She prayed. And she called on the ministering angels to hedge him about. And then when this occurred, uh, when he got thrown over that rail, uh, she started down the stairs and people were screaming and hollering. And, and she would just say, just pray. Just pray. Don't say anything. Just pray. So that's as a backdrop to the MRI session, five hours of an MRI. And uh, their, you know, Landon's grandfather called me later that afternoon and said, well, the MRI is a testimony itself. Uh, because, let me finish this, and then you can give the Lord a shout. There was zero evidence of brain damage, not just brain damage, there wasn't even any swelling in the brain. And, no spinal cord injury, no nerve damage, no internal injuries that were life-threatening. Uh, there was some small internal bleeding that had to be addressed, but uh, you know, the doctors, of course, he broke, a lot of bones were broken. And, uh, you know, they worked on his face the next day. I think that was last, would have been Thursday, last Thursday. Uh, and the nose, the cheekbones, and the doctors were amazed at how everything just kind of fell back in place. And uh, one of his attending physicians said this, 
this is truly a miracle. This is him speaking. This is truly a miracle. It's like he fell off a bicycle instead of off the third floor of the mall. And so this is resurrection power. This. Glory. Come on. Hallelujah. This is what the word will do. Yeah. It'll open that power to you to restore whatever the enemy. Come on. Come on. This is what I'm trying to teach. If that mom and dad and grandparents had just lived in Adam, they would immediately started talking about how awful death, death, trouble, why us, why all of those things. But because they knew from the word how to live in Christ, the mother, instead of screaming and going hysterical, is telling everybody, just pray, just pray, just pray. Come on, I hope you hear me. Now, I'm sure if that mom were here today, she'd say, I, 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 you see, she said, I slipped a little into Adam because the Holy Spirit told me not to go in. But I overrode what the Holy Spirit said because I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Oh, come on. So she still got some growing to do, but how many, how many like to live in such a place that God forbid, but if anything like that were to happen and some demonized, deranged man grabbed your five-year-old and threw him over a third floor balcony, how many like to live in such a place that the report of the MRI would be there's no swelling on the brain, there's no damage internally that's like, come on, hallelujah. Well, you can do it. You can do it. To be spiritually minded is life yes. and peace. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the carnal mind, the sinful nature way of thinking, those who are in Adam cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You're not in Adam but you're in the spirit of Jesus, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Come on, how many born again Christians in this room with me? Then you've got the spirit of God in you. So will you lift your hand and say, I am not living after the sinful nature. I'm not Adam anymore. I'm in Christ. He said, if anyone doesn't have the spirit of Christ, they don't belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. This, this body, you need to listen to Wednesday night. It'll help you with these areas. This body's not going into heaven. This body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, how many have that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwelling in you? Glory to God. Then will you wave with me and say, this same spirit is also giving life to me. Let me read that to you from the, from the message paraphrase. It stands to reason, doesn't it? That if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus. Bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does, as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ. Somebody say, amen. amen. Oh, glory to God. So tell the two men, look, you know you're in Christ. Let me talk to the believers. You're in Christ. Stop living like Adam. Stop thinking like Adam. Now it's a process. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get there overnight, but set your heart. I'm gonna make a choice to think like Christ. I'm gonna make a choice to let the Bible become not just a daily devotional, but let it let it get into me. Change the way I see things and the way I perceive things. Come on, hallelujah. Life is about choices. How many ready to make a choice to live in Christ and not in Adam? Go ahead. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I, look, look, I, I, I don't have time. We're going to receive new covenant partners, but uh, I don't have time. But I got, look at this. 
These are, these are verses. I don't even know how many pages. I didn't count. These are verses of in him scriptures. These are pages from the New Testament alone of in him, in Christ, by Christ, through him, through Jesus. Whew. Hallelujah. And if you just learn to live in him, you're already in him. You just make the choice. I, I'm going to start living it. Hallelujah. When you go through growth track, we, one of the things we give you at the end of the fourth session is this says, I am, I am a saint, a trophy of Christ's victory. I am born again of imperishable seed. I am a new creation complete in Christ and perfect forever. I am a child of God, the apple of my father's eye. I am one with the Lord in the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am eternally redeemed and completely forgiven. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. I am summoned by name and and I am his. I am dead to sin and alive to God. I'm free from guilt and condemnation. I am righteous. I am holy. I am blameless. I am healed. I am strong in the Lord. I am hidden in Christ and secure. I am loved with an everlasting love and I am highly favored. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on. I am the head and not the tail. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing and I'm a joint heir with Christ. Whew, my, I gotta stop. Hallelujah. I am, I am because of Jesus. Now I gotta learn to live that way. So we're getting ready to pray. Come on, Jack, listen, listen. I heard something that really stuck with me. I feel like I need to share it right here. From Vietnam War, they did some study of the difference between the frontline troops and the rear echelon troops. The difference in morality, the difference in attitude between those who were on the front lines and those who were in the very back. Guess what they discovered? Frontline troops never complained about the food. But the rear echelon, they always complained about the mess, the grub. Hmm. Frontline troops respected and obeyed their commanding officers. But the rear echelon troops, they, they, they had disrespect for their leaders and questioned every order. Uh-oh. Frontline troops didn't criticize their fellow soldiers. Frontline troops, in fact, exhibit amazing loyalty to their comrades. Those who were in the foxholes with them, they exhibit amazing loyalty. They risked their own lives to save a brother. But in the rear, there was constant bickering and fighting. And everyone was out for themselves and not for others. You say, well, how does that fit this message? Look, if you're going to learn how to live in Christ, it begins by a decision to get all in and to be a frontline person. Not, not a back, not a, not a rear. Can I just tell you something? You come to this church, look, I, I, got, I got issues. I got a lot of areas I need to grow, but can I tell you something? I'm always going to feed you. I got a lot of areas I got to grow in, but I, I'm always going to come with food. Yeah. Yeah. So if you find people that are complaining about the food, you can almost, you can almost guarantee that they're hanging out in the rear. Ah, getting quiet in here now. Come on, come on. You find people that are always questioning what's going on. You'll find people that aren't involved in the trenches in the front. Come on, they, they just hang. Come on, are you hearing me right now? And if you find people when you preach a message like this that say, well, I don't know about, I just, I, come on, come out of the rear and let's come to the front. And, and I'm not talking about the front of the building. I'm talking about attitude and say, I'm going to be all in for Jesus. If, if anything were to happen to my little child, first I want to live in such a place that I keep that hedge up. But if anything were to happen, how many want to be like this family? Blessed be God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. So will you just lift your hands with me? In fact, why don't you stand with me all over the room? Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Come on, you just lift your hands as high as you can right now. This is a call for surrender. This is a call for you to say, I, I, I don't want to hang out in the back in my Christianity. I want to get on the front. I want to be all in. I, want, I accept the call for all in Christianity. Come on, will you just lift your hands? You don't have to come to the front of this building, but right where you are in your heart, will you just say, Lord, I'm all in. I'm all in. Can God find somebody at the Lift Church who'll just say, I'm all in, Jesus. I'm all in. I'm all in with you. I'm all in with your word. I'm all in in your worship. I'm all in in prayer. I'm all in. I'm all in in the church you placed me in. I'm all in. I'm all in, Lord. I'm all in with my life, with my family. I say yes to you. I say yes. My hope is in you. My confidence is in you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hands lifted up all over this room. Right now, right now. The eyes of the Lord are searching through this place. God is looking for those whose hearts are after him. Whose hearts are perfect toward him. Bent after him. So that he might show himself strong on your behalf. So I dare you to just in humility say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Jesus. Here I am, Jesus. I surrender to you. I give myself to you. Come on, if you're here today and you've been backslid right now, right where you are, make, make your calling sure. Make your, your salvation search and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I've been doing my own thing, living my own way, but I surrender right now. Come on, every Christian in here who says, who says I've been living too much in Adam, I want to learn how to live in Christ. Come on, will you lift your hands, lift your voice, and just confess it right now? Say, Lord Jesus, I want to live in you. Not in Adam, not in flesh. I want to live in you. Father, I thank you for what you're doing right now around this room. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. I'm going to ask you to gently reach over and take somebody's hand or put your hand on their shoulder. And if you're uncomfortable with that, you never are forced to do anything here. But if you're okay with that, do that. And if you're uncomfortable, nobody's going to be offended around you. I hope they're more mature than that. They're just going to understand that it's, you're just going to be you for a minute. It's all right. Will you just pray for each other right now? Will you just pray that there's going to that, that be an, uh, a level of all in like we've never experienced? Will you just pray that there's going to be a growth in learning how to walk and live as Christ and not as Adam? Will you just pray that we're not going to hang out at the old address anymore, but we're going to follow Jesus into new adventures, into new realms, into new places? Come on. Will you just pray that, that our life is not going to be a religious facade and we claim one thing, but our life is very different than what we know? Will you just pray the reality of the resurrection is going to become the, the story of the life of the person you're praying with right now in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for doing it here in Wilkes County and everyone that's watching right now. I pray, Lord God, that the power and the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this new life, is going to become the story of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in this room, on this campus and watching. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, can, can somebody just lift your voice and say, Jesus is Lord of my life. I am his, and I will follow him all of my days. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Remain standing with me. We're going we're gonna to pray over some covenant partners that are becoming a part of the Lift Church. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask those covenant partners to come. I don't have a list in front of me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, here it is right here. Thank you. I got it behind me. Thanks. Amen. Terrell and Kathy Cox, come on and join us up here. Tim and Shirley Osborne, come on and join us. Kyle Prince, come on and join us. Sean and Ashley Ramsey, come on and join us up here. Tom and Mandy Pierce, come on and join us up here. Thomas and Susie Hamilton, come on and join us up here. 
Hallelujah, Scott and Shannon Olinger. Come on, brother, sister. Come on, can we give a great big God bless you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. My, my, my. It's a good looking group. Praise God. Margie, where are you? Come on. Hallelujah. I thought you was up here. Amen. Praise God. Pastor, Mo oh, yeah, I had brought it up here. I had to use it. Okay. Hallelujah. We are so blessed. Look, what this means is that these who are here have gone through a growth track and they prayerfully sought the Lord and they've said, we don't want to be dating anymore. We're going to get married. Come on. <laughs> that's, what, that's what covenant's about. When we say covenant partnership, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about a bondage. We're not talking about anybody ruling over you. We're talking about marriage, covenant. We're talking about this is, you just believe this is where God's placed me and I've got something valuable to add. And I'm here to receive and to grow, but I'm also here to be a part and to see the vision of the, of the kingdom of God through the lift church become reality. Hallelujah. And so I invite you, if you haven't gone through growth track yet, or maybe you've gone through some of it, but not all of it. Come on, come on. We're going to kick it off again soon. So find out about that. Praise God. Can I just um, yeah. say my voice? I just got it back and then I just lost it again in children's ministry. But that's okay. <laughs> Um, they sign at the end of growth track, those of you who have gone through it, at the end, they sign something that says, having received Christ as my Lord and Savior and being in agreement with the values and ideas presented in the growth track class, I now feel led by the Holy Spirit to unite with yeah. the Lift Church. Mm. In doing so, I commit myself to God and to the other members to do the following. One, I will protect the unity of my church. Praise Two, God. I will share the responsibility of my church. Yeah. Three, I will serve the ministry of my church. And four, I will support the testimony of my church. And amen. they all signed that. So, amen. amen. Here, on. here. Yeah. That's awesome. Isn't that powerful? So, so we're gonna pray. I want, to, I want our leadership team, those that are in the room to come up and join us. We're gonna, we're gonna pray over these men and women. I'm so blessed. There's such, look, I look at this group as I look at you. There's such anointings. There's such history and experience and faith and genuineness. And I'm so thankful that God is growing us and he's bringing people who catch the vision this isn't, the Lift Church is not my church. It's not Pastor Marcy's, Margie's church. It's not our church. It's God's church. This vision is not our vision. It's God's. He, he gave it to us. He entrusted us with it. But he didn't give it to us alone. He gave it to you. He gave it to you. And there's something unique that each of you bring that is key to the fulfillment of the fullness of the vision. Hallelujah. So every time we have these services, I feel like weeping because it's, it's not just what's happening now, but it's, what, it's what's ahead. It's what's ahead that this represents. Hallelujah. It's what's ahead. So we're going to pray right now. I want the, the, the team to come up and just lay hands on, on the individual. Will you stretch your hands this way? Praise God. Praise God. We just, we're just going to believe God together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these covenant partners, these men, these women, such talents, such gifts, such experience, such anointing, such vision, such calling. Lord, you brought them here. The stories are amazing and they're, they're different. Uh, Lord, for each one, such amazing ways in which you brought them to the Lift Church. Now, Father, we thank you. We thank you that as they're here and they've, they've heard your voice and they've obeyed you, Lord, we just receive them into covenant right now. In the name of Jesus, we say welcome to covenant. 
in Jesus' mighty name and covenant with all the privileges and all the responsibility. We thank you, Lord, for the covenant partnership that, Lord, they, they agree in the covenant with us to pray for us. We covenant with them to pray over them. They covenant with us to protect us. We covenant with them to protect them. They covenant with us to be a blessing. We covenant with them to be a blessing. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in these lives. And I thank you for what they bring to this body. And we receive it by faith in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, you just lift your voices and give praise. Thank you, Lord, for my brother. Thank you for my sister. Thank you, Lord, for this bundle of joy and laughter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yay. Glory, glory, glory. We receive you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory 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 thank you thank you father thank you hallelujah we receive each one in Jesus mighty name God bless you praise God thank you Lord my brother and sister bless them we receive them by faith in Jesus name hallelujah wow come on can we give one more hand clap of praise to the Lord Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you something. There's some amazing stories up here. Some amazing stories out there, how God's bringing people to the Lift Church. And it's so humbling for Margie and I. And we're so thankful. Years ago, I was in Canada preaching. And a little lady in, in a prayer time, she said, in fact, her name, her name was Shirley. And, and in a prayer time, she said, uh, uh, Keith, I saw you and your wife out in a field. It was before Isabella came along. I saw you and your wife out in a field and uh, you, were, you were working to bring a harvest in. And all of a sudden she said, I saw equipment start rolling in and other people start coming in with big equipment. And the Lord said, the harvest is gonna be greater than you can imagine, but it's not gonna require you to work harder. Hallelujah. It's come on. It's going to be multiplication. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I received that word that day and I rejoiced and thank God we're seeing God do it. Hallelujah. So the harvest is going to be greater than we could have imagined. Praise God. Hallelujah. Cause God's multiplying us. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, have you been blessed today? You ready to live as, as Christ and not as Adam? Amen. Hallelujah. When you walk into a place, you change the place because you're walking in as Jesus. Oh, yeah. You're walking in as Christ. You ever walk into a place and some people look at you like they could kill you? Come on. It's not the people. It's the demon. It's the evil spirit that has control of their life. So don't, don't look at them flesh to flesh. Take authority in the spirit and love on the person. Love on the person. I've been in places where, where I, not even, I, I was in one place and somebody's getting a massage. There's an er, a, 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 Earth Fair over in Asheville. It's like a neck and shoulder massage thing in a chair, face down. I just walked by and that person, Margie saw it, just jerked up. Why? Because there was a different spirit in me. I hope you hear me. And I'm saying that to you because God's sending us out there to be Jesus to a generation. Hallelujah. But we can't be it. Oh, fact. Philemon chapter 1, verse 6. Can you put that up? Jacob, can you put that up? Philemon chapter 1, verse 6. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Philemon 1, 6. Hallelujah. Philemon. P H I L E. It's in the New Testament. 
Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. Watch this. Watch this. That the sharing of your faith may become effective. Watch this. How are we going to be effective witnesses for Christ? By the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. You and I never become as effective witness as we can be until we learn how to live in Christ and not in Adam. Because in Adam, I'm intimidated that they're going to reject me. But in Christ, I'm empowered to love them, whether they reject me or not. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you. Praise God. What a sweet, sweet presence of God. Where's Caleb Buck at? There he is. Hallelujah. Come on. We're going to pray and we're going to be dismissed. Did you receive something today? God bless you. We love you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Powerful word, powerful word. Hey, we're, I just want to remind you before we pray and dismiss, of course, we're gearing up and we're super excited about this Nurture Conference uh, for leaders. Uh, like Pastor said, everyone's a leader if you have influence over anybody. So I want to encourage you to sign up and get registered today. That's on May 9th. Of course, Lyndall Cooley is going to be with us. It's going to be a powerful time. So take advantage of that opportunity. Also, a prayer gathering tomorrow night, of course, weekly on Mondays at 714. And then this Wednesday, we're super excited. We've got our youth tribe takeover with our children's and youth ministry. Uh, we're going to be doing our first Wednesday service, so it's it's uh, it's going to be a power-packed service. We're going to hear and, and see some things from the children's and youth ministry, uh, so you're going to be blessed, and it's going to be all about um, just, you know, their hearts and, and sharing their hearts so we can, uh, some you know, see send them off to camp this summer, um, and we're excited about that opportunity, so come be ready to, to receive on Wednesday night, and uh, we'll, we'll be blessed in Jesus' name. So let's pray, and we'll go. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this service. Lord, we thank you for the revelation of Christ in us, Lord. Father, we ask that you would make it a reality for us, Lord. Help us, help us to, to remind ourselves, Father, who we're living for and what we're living for, Father, that we would seek to live in Christ in this world, Father. Lord, I ask that you bless these, your people, as they go into their worlds, Father, this week and forever, Father, that you would live big in them, Father, that they would be Jesus with skin on to the world around them, Father. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Go in grace, peace, and the Holy Spirit. We love you.